what you need to know before you go to Iran. It's a beautiful country and it's handy to have a couple of things in mind before you go here. Number one, contradictory to what you think it'd be, uh, talk to strangers or even better yet, strangers will talk to you. The amount of time people will go up to you and just say something to you like, hey, where are you from, is astonishing. And normally in like countries like Asia, uh, you'd probably think that they want to sell you something or s scam you into something. Here in Iran, I think out of, let's say, 50 times people ask me something like, hey, where are you from? They just meant it to be friendly and say, welcome to my country. That's it. One or two times people ask like, hey, do you want to see my shop? I sell carpets and that's about it. So it's really different than a lot of other countries here. They really, yeah, most of them are really interested in what you, um, where you're from or what you're doing here in Iran and why you're here on holiday. Uh, second thing that's I need to know is money. That's a thing. Uh, for us Westerners, uh, we can't really just get cash from the machine here. Credit cards don't work. We can't pay with a card. Uh, you have to bring cash. Now, you bring dollars, you bring US uh, dollars or euros, and you have to exchange it. Before, it was easier to change money. Now it's a little bit more difficult. There's a couple of banks that do it, and otherwise you have to find someone on the street, but that's officially illegal. These things change, so check up before you go. Um, I've heard, though, that you can get a prepaid credit card on the airport and then use it to wirelessly pay or pay like with a debit card, with a Iranian debit card or credit card you buy at the airport. And that's really convenient because the amount of places where you can just pay by card here, if you have an Iranian card, uh, is really high. Third thing, talking about money, um, how much is it? That's interesting because they kind of have, well, real, that's the, the money they use, um, that has a lot of zeros. So for convenience sake, they have Oman, which is like one decimal less. Uh, but then for co extra convenience, they'll have a price like 14 and a probably means 14,000 Toman, which is 140,000 Real. Um, so the conversion is kind of a messed up thing. It usually turns out to be cheaper than you think it was, uh, but keep that in mind. Um, let's see, fourthly, good thing to know is, well, there's a motorcycle passing here. Uh, fourth thing is interesting is you do have to pay for stuff even if they tell you not to pay for things. Uh, they have a thing here, um, it's called Tarof. Tarof. Yeah, I forgot the name. Tarof. It's like being, yeah, being polite. For example, if you walk through a door, you tell the other person, no, you, no, you go first. No, you go first. And then the other person will go, no, no, you go first. No, you go first. And this can go on quite a while. I think from what I've seen, usually you'd let a woman go first or an older person, you let them go first. But since you're a tourist, you're a guest here in their country, they might want to let you go first. Um, but they also do this with money. We had a couple of times, even in a taxi cab, where we had like a pri price agreed, because Snap here, that's something like Uber, works here. Uh, and then the taxi driver or the Snap driver would say, no, 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 no. And then you go, yeah, but I do want to pay. No, 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 no. And they'll go two or three times before they, oh yeah, thank you. And they just accept the money. So do please, you know, pay for stuff. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Fifth, things change. That's true in every country, but it's specifically true here. Uh, my friend Mark here has been to Iran four times, and I think the visa procedure and getting into the country has been different every single time he went. Stuff changes, so always check up on things before you go, because last minute information might change everything. Another thing you might want to check before you go is your internet connectivity, because here in, in Iran, internet is a bit it, it's there, but it's interesting. Wi-Fi usually is very slow. Plus, there's a lot of sites that you can't access. For example, uh, YouTube, you can't access YouTube. You can't access um, Facebook. WhatsApp is available now and Instagram is too, but maybe tomorrow it isn't. So it might be useful if you want to have something uh, usefulness in, in, on the internet to get a VPN before you leave your own country. I did the same thing, but my VPN ended up not working in Iran. So again here, do your research before you go. Once you're here in the country, uh, Wi-Fi is usually quite slow. I haven't really found a good one. Um, it might be best to invest in a little uh, SIM card from a local Iranian uh, telco. They're quite cheap and the 4G network is way faster than the Wi-Fi networks uh, are. Plus you got an Iranian number, which is convenient if you want to order a snap or call to a certain place. 
Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, visiting a mosque, that's interesting, definitely on the to-do list. Um, mosques, probably you're allowed to get in there. We try to be like polite and not just rush in and just wait if then somebody just makes eye contact and goes like, yeah, yeah, please go in. And then you walk with them and you have to take off your shoes and walk in on socks or barefoot and it's fine. Um, there's an entrance for men because there's a men part of a mosque and there's a female part of the mosque. And when you're in there, uh, I found it really surprising um, that it's quite relaxed. Yeah, some people are just hanging out, escaping from the busyness or taking a little nap. Other people, of course, are praying. Uh, but we had a nice little chat with some people, quiet down, and some people were even playing on the phone in a mosque. But yeah, worth a visit. Um, clothes. Yeah, what to wear in Iran, that's another thing. For women, of course, that's more, uh, you have to kind of, in, in, in public, you have to cover up from, from all the way up to here with covering your uh, hair and all that. For men, it's much easier, although uh, long pants are required. Um, well, you're a tourist, so if you walk around in shorts, they, yeah, no, they won't like it. And you don't see anyone wearing shorts out in public. Slippers, however, uh, are acceptable, I think. You see a couple of people there and that's okay, and especially because you're a tourist, that's, uh, that's doable. Uh, so the right clothes for the right time of year, but also for decency purposes. Um, oh yeah, do accept an invitation, that's another thing. Um, sometimes people might invite you to something, like, oh, you should come over for dinner, and, and then it's nice to be polite and say, no, 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 that's too much trouble. And they might go again, the type of thing, uh, no, 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 but you should come round. And you're like, nah, maybe not. And if they repeat this thing for like three or four times, then it might become good to say, yes, I do want to go there, because then they probably really mean for you to come over and have a time. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you do accept an invitation. Um, dealing with official stuff, that's an interesting one too, because you see lots of, well, usually guys wearing official garb and outfit. As long as you're respectful and if you're nice to people, they're not scary and they don't mean you any harm at all. And they might be strict, you think, but when you're nice and you just talk to them a little bit, and my friend Mark knows some words in Farsi, he can have a little conversation, and then all of a sudden some rules sometimes are flexible. So that's an interesting one too. You think strict, but then there's flexibleness uh, there too, if you want. Um, shaking hands, that's another interesting thing. I didn't know what to do. Apparently, guys, they shake a lot of hands on the street here. And in, yeah, shaking hands with guys for a guy, always. Uh, with women, I think it's best to let the woman decide what to do. If they stick out the hand, obviously shake their hand. If they don't, they might do something like this, which is like, another hello thing and you do this thing and that's then that's fine too usually this i think means something like thankful or pay or a bit of respect to the other person um another way of saying hello let's see another thing mm. friday is the holiday is a day off i didn't know that friday is a day off anything else mark did i forget stuff because that's the first things I, I thought of, like, hey, this is what surprised me here in Iran. I can summarize this. It's an amazing country. The people are, I don't know, I, I've never seen that friendly people up for tourists. It's amazing. And it really gives you a new perspective on the world and especially on Iran and what this country is like. So I think two thumbs up. Do go here and enjoy yourself because you probably will. All right, see you in Iran. Nou, zoiets. Zoiets. <laughs>